the Kentuckiana Crossing. The bridges project has been debated for years. The discussions have focused on what's right and what's wrong with the East End Bridge, the tunnel, Spaghetti Junction, and 8664. While these are very important, I've nothing to add but an opinion, so this talk is about another ignored facet of the project that in many ways is the most important, the proposed new downtown bridge. This might be the new front door to Louisville. What's right about this is that it gets traffic across the river. What's wrong is that it's upriver from the Kennedy Bridge and therefore mostly invisible from downtown. Also, its proximity to the Kennedy emphasizes their very different structures and creates a visual tension that makes the Kennedy look heavy and the new bridge flimsy. This proposed view from Waterfront Park shows them crashing into each other and suggests the biggest wrong of all. Both bridges will of course be one way, and visitors entering Louisville will be on the same old bridge they've always been on. You'll have to leave the state and drive to Indiana to experience the new bridge. Welcome to Kentucky, or welcome to Indiana. Which is the most welcoming? This is just awful, and it seems odd that it hasn't been considered given the example we already have at our side door. From a distance, the Sherman Minton is a very attractive bridge but it's a stacked deck and we're the losers on the bottom. Again, pick your welcoming image. Coincidence? Ask the person next to you if they're from Indiana. I think maybe they're all in on this. So here's a right way to do it. Building a new twin bridge next to the existing is the ultimate solution to conflicting designs. Each bridge now visually supports the other and together they appear not heavy but simply strong. What's wrong with this though is it's not very iconic, not any more welcoming to Kentucky, and from the park the bridges look like bookends. And so they should be. These additional arched elements, while literally supported by the two bridges, also connect them. There were two, but adding this doesn't make three. It's a combination, a composition, one single thing. It should be said here that this is less expensive than the original proposal. It's better, and it costs less. This all just takes advantage of the unusual opportunity created by bridges being so close together. The arches are very efficient because the bridge columns are already there to help carry the weight, while the arches laterally resist each other. The arches and the bridges become point and counterpoint. The arches peak when the bridges trough. They are the color against the gray. So now we enter Kentucky, or Indiana, in a more equitable and much more pleasing way. Now driving into Louisville occurs between the skyline and a kinetic sculpture. Welcome to Indiana and welcome to Kentucky. Perhaps the best thing is that the bridges are no longer giants that just stomp through Waterfront Park because a piece of them gently swoops down and touches the earth. What's wrong with this though is that we're not really thinking big enough nor planning long term enough and there still seems to be something missing. So since this shouldn't end up as simply a sculptural decoration which is just not quite iconic enough, let's add cables to the arches that support a series of beams which in turn support something else. We have to get up there though, so the bridges now really interact with the park to include an entry plaza with spiral steps circumnavigating an elevator tower. This is going to take a little longer. Indiana will also eventually build one, since their bridge is now no better than Kentucky's and so they'll want to know why that was worth it. This is why. You find the Kentuckiana Crossing, 1963 feet long and 85 feet wide with a three-quarter mile perimeter bike path, a series of botanical gardens, sculpture installations, and water fountains, almost four acres of what's now missing in Louisville, all interacting upon the most amazing venue we have, the river. So do we really want an icon? Driving across the bridge would become, excuse me for saying, an absolutely world-class event. The crossing would be a destination all its own. Now the twin bridges make sense not flashy, they're efficiently built for passage, but by framing the crossing they contribute to what would be one of the most unique and amazing bridges anywhere on the planet. Really? You couldn't drive by too many times without wanting to go there and you'd have to enter the crossing. The top of the steps or the opening elevator places one at the first arch and the first garden. The crossing is eight feet above the flanking expressway so one enters the garden, has glimpses of the indigenous treed canopy over the traffic at the river environs, and, perhaps, smiles. Next, the sculpture courts are located beneath the apex of the outer arches, sculptures themselves populated by local artistry, and in the center we get our fleur-de-lis fountain back, this time only visually floating as you look around its perimeter to the river below, and perhaps a pegasus the Muse's symbol of high-flying imagination, looking over Possibility City. After the court is another garden, which you won't mind leaving so much because then you enter the water walk. 
at the spring line of the arches and only covered by clouds, this is a display of every possible combination of squirt and squiggle. And yes, those 30-foot tall blue arches are rainbow fountains you walk under. After all, Louisville's here because of the water, and we're celebrating the River City. Where can we go from there? Here. The entire center arch envelops Museum Plaza, a public square creatively named because the Kentuckiana History Museum is located here. And since this is Icon Central, this circulation tower is also a lighthouse in the center of the river, a beacon for us all. Have you ever flown into Louisville over the river? Can you imagine? At the top of the tower one finds, of course, an observation deck. Nestled in the upper arch and looking out over the Kennedy Bridge, the views up and down the river, the views of Kentucky and Indiana, and especially the views of the crossing itself would be amazing. This by itself is worth the price of admission. It isn't by itself, though, and traveling down the tower reveals three stories of museum beneath the crossing. The first store is contained within the beams themselves and holds the main entry and support spaces. Below the main museum, which will expand towards the shorelines as our history continues, contains a cafe overlooking the cities. The lowest level may be the best. Located below the bridge's framework, it's a 360-degree view of the Ohio River. The other side of the complex reveals the last piece of the puzzle, what appears to be a floating tram that delivers one comfortably to the center of it all, part of a future light rail system. It will arrive someday, and we'll be ready for it. So we're only halfway through the crossing, but you get the idea. Although I do wish I had time to show the zip lines. So finally, although there is nothing like this, to help us imagine the reality, here are some precedents for the pieces, like words in the dictionary combined to make a poem. When we build, let us think that we build forever. We're looking at at least a decade of construction and at least four billion dollars. So at least, let's build it right.